Hi everyone, uh, today I'd like to show you a little bit about uh, color. Um, so anyway, let's begin. Now, uh, right now I'm using something called TV Paint uh, to do my painting, so you can do this with Photoshop. But I've also created a number of um, tools and plugins to, to help me out with, with this kind of um, digital medium. Now, when you're working with digital color, it's a little different from say something like, well actually you know what, there's a lot that it has in common with traditional media like paint um, or watercolor in that these mediums are only capable of reproducing uh, a certain number of colors. You'll find that uh, in nature there's no limit to how bright things can get, you know, up to the point where, you know, you got the sun. If you stare into the sun it's so bright that it'll eventually, you know, burn out your eyeballs. But um, when it comes to, you know, digital medium or natural medium, there's only so bright that the paper or the paint can get, and there's only so bright that your, your screen can get. And even in the case of digital medium, um, you'll find that when you're working with RGB color uh, in a digital medium, um, you'll find that these RGB values, these are the red, green, and blue channels, um, they can only go from zero all the way up to 255. That is the range that digital medium um, RGB is, is capable of. It can only go from 0 to 255. And because of this narrow range of things, when you're trying to depict uh, different things of different intensity, like let's say sunlight for instance, um, you're going to have to work within that range. You're going to have to adjust your range um, to deal with how bright something is. For instance, it's daytime right now and if we were to take a look outside, Look how bright that is. Woo! <laughs> Did you just see that with the, with, the, with the camera? How everything just suddenly whoop, How everything suddenly darkened and dimmed down? That's because, just like this video camera, this video camera is only capable of capturing a limited number of um, colors. There's, if, if something gets too bright, you know, like the sunlight outside for instance, it overexposes. You get, um, you, you basically, hang on, let me see if I can again. Let's see if that that fix it? Well, it kind of did. Okay. Anyway, the, the thing what, about it is, again, this video camera, there's only so dark you can get. You'll find that, you know, certain things like this chair, my hair, you know, they just show up as these really, really dark shapes. Um, wha whereas everything else is, is showing up, you know, in color. Uh, you expose for a certain range. If you don't expose long enough, then things like my hair are just going to they're just going to crush to black. Um, you know, it's the same thing when you look at the digital medium here. You'll find that the colors will just crush to zero. It means you're out of the range. Um, you, you can't, you know, it can't go any darker than that. And the same thing is happening with this video camera. You know, when I put my hand, or maybe if I if I turn, well, actually, I'm going to just turn the, the this thing over here. Now, take a look. You see how up in the corner, you know, um, up over there, right, right up here. See how white all how white that area is. You know, white is, is, is the color that you're going to get if um, something winds up overexposed. If it is out of the range, you know, just how, black, just how black is the color of something that is under your range and just gets crushed out, all the detail and information is lost, white's the same thing. White up there, this white table, it's, it's overexposed. It's gone too bright, and when you, when you look at the digital medium here, here, these, we've got these three RGB channels, right? So if you ever max out a channel, if you max all three channels to 255, you get white. And white is, the, is, is also, you'll, you'll find that whenever you can tell that there's a color, right? Right now we can see there's a color here that's yellow. As, oops. as long as you can tell that a color is anything but white, right? Like, like outside. See that outside window? See how, how that's all blown out to white? Like, you know, right over there, that wall? It's blown out to white, and what has happened is all three RGB channels, all the three, you know, RGB channels have maxed to the top. We've got 255, 255, 255. When they're all the same, you get white. And over here, you know, my, my, you know, my slightly kind of yellow-brown complexion, um, you can see a color there. You can see something that's ni neither white nor gray. You know, it's, it's got a color to it because you know, you can see the disproportionate values um, of, of R, G, and B. When you look here, the same thing is going on here. When you look here, you can see that there's a color yellow because red, green, and blue are not the same. There's a disproportion in the, chan in, in the color channels. But if I set all of these to, you know, identical values, oops, see, they all just turn into a gray. We lose the color. So color the ability to perceive color, the ability to see color and, and depict color is dependent on 
your ability, you know, how much you can get an imbalance between red, green, and blue. You know, if I take some paper 3D glasses, these paper 3D glasses, you know, if I cut out there, now you're only seeing the red channel, right? And things look red because by putting this filter on there, I'm cutting out the green and the blue. All you see left is red, okay? And even, oops, even when things overexpose, ooh, uh, even when things overexpose, like in the case of that wall up there, you're still able to see the disproportion in color. That's why you can see red. That's why it appears it appears red. But here's the funny thing: is that if I if I go to the really let's go to the really bright section of the window, the windows aren't even open. Like the blinds are drawn right now. And if we go over and we look at that, you see that there. Look at look at the um at the table on on the desk. If you look at at, at those you know the 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 cluttered paper you know here I'm pointing at it with my stylus. You see how that? Even though this filter only lets red light through, see how that's white. That's an interesting thing. You see, what's happened is we thought we were cutting out everything except the red, but th what has happened is is that enough light is escaping through, enough maybe non-red light is, is escaping through this thing, or maybe the value of the light is high enough that what happens is it doesn't just activate the red and, and green, th uh, the, the red filters only, it doesn't just activate the red sensors in your eye or, or the red sensors in this camera. It's going high enough to affect the green and the blue sensors, so again, it's crushing the white, it overexposed, that's white. And the same thing can be said for black. Black is whenever, you know, there's not enough light to activate, there's only, there's not enough light to activate any of them, and you know, you're going to get black. So, you know, that's that's just generally the concept of exposure. And, and also this camera, um, the great thing is, watch this, if I, if I turn this thing towards the, the light, okay, you see that there's this, um, right up there, you see that, that bright white region right here on this wall? Now, if I start turning the camera over further and further, look what happens to the rest of the picture. See that? All here is all darkening. It's all darkening. And what's happening is the camera is adjusting its, its exposure. It's, it's exposing the, the image less. It's letting less light onto the digital film. And it's going to cause, and the reason it does that is so that all these white areas don't crush out, it's so that all these white areas here don't crush out to pure white. You know, if they were crushed to white, all the details lost. So the camera is adjusting its exposure so we don't lose the details. We don't lose all the, the, the blind, you know, all the little fiddly things on the blind. It has to, it has to, decrease um, the exposure so that these details become visible. But as a consequence, all the details, you know how nice how nicely exposed these colors are, right? Those colors are nicely exposed. But when we dim down things, we lose the detail. All these dark, all, all the things uh, down in the corner, you know that, that, um, that, that drawing board down there in the corner? You see that? We lose the details when we start to expose for brighter things, okay? So when you're dealing with digital medium or traditional medium, you have to consider the exposure. You have to, consi you have to consider um, what things are going to be within your exposure range, the, the, the gamut this is, you know, what they talk about in Photoshop. They call it the gamut, G-A-M-U-T. This is, you have to figure out what will your gamut, your limited gamut, you know, the, 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 the colors that you're capable of reproducing, what range will that, will that be able to cover? Will you be able to see the things in the highlights? Will you be able to see things, you know, in the midtones, like here? What are you going to, you know, which, which, which parts of the, of, the, of the color spectrum, which parts of your, your, your value, you know, the whole value, um, uh, all the values that are coming in. I guess you could say the value structure. Which parts of the value structure are you going to choose to blow out to white and just get rid of them? And which parts are going to crush to black and get rid of those? So if you want your work to look like a photograph, <laughs> you have to think like a camera does, right? Because the camera, it exposes for a specific range, and it only catches that range. The rest of it is all thrown out. Now, in the case of our eyes, all right, I mean, we can sit indoors, and we can look outside and we can see the wonderful details on the wall, right? You know, we, we can look outdoors and, you know, our eyes are very different. You'll find that, you know, you, you might be able to look outdoors or in, in the case of that wall, that, that brightly lit uh, wall right over here. Yeah, this, this brightly lit wall. Right now it appears white here, but when I look at it with my own eyeballs, I can tell that it's, you know, slightly yellowish, you know, it's, it's, it's got a bit of a cream color to it. You know, if, it, you'll see if I, if I see, now you can see that color, right? We had to dim down the exposure for that, okay? But right now, okay, the camera looks at things very differently. It overexposed that region. But our, to our eyes, those areas don't overexpose. And it's because our eyes 
have a much wider range. They have a much larger gamut, and their 